going to have a quick presentation about process mining. I think regarding the colleague who just spoke before me, we are way behind since we've just started about, say, three quarters of a year ago. Um, quick introduction, how did I get to contact with process mining? It was in Berlin about a year and a half ago at about three o'clock at night in a bar in, in Simon Dachstraße. <laughs> and I talked, to, I talked to a friend of mine and he invented the new Chino trousers with a new uh, tissue apparently and so he, he was doing his first own company with that and apparently he met Anna on a business fair or a starter's fair or something and he was very enthusiastic about process mining and so I kept it in the back of my mind for quite some time. Um, anyways, um, to my person I am in purchasing within Volkswagen I have been more or less purchasing all my business life, first in the chemical industry um, and then I did a PhD project on purchasing, global sourcing and now I'm in, in the ordering process. With me I have my colleague Paul Scheffler here who is the responsible for this project also and who has done all the number crunching in the back. Um, well right then, let's start. This is not so much to show off as more to show you the complexity which in which we operate in. And I think this number down there is the most interesting one. We produce about uh, 37,000 vehicles per day. And if you put them all bumper to bumper to bumper, that's about 140 kilometers of cars, which we produce every day. Sorry for that. Um, so yeah, that's quite, quite some um, operations there. We have about 124 billion euro of purchasing turnover. And as I said, I'm operating the ordering process, so all this money goes through the process which my team and I are operating. Um, why is purchasing so important for us? If you look at the sort of classic, um, classic value chain, you see that purchasing has about 62, or in our case, it's more than 70% of the volumes directly passed through to the suppliers. So it's, it's for us, it's of massive importance. So just to put it into perspective, this apparently is Bangladesh. Has everybody, anybody ever been to Bangladesh? No, neither have I. But um, it's up there and their um, gross domestic product is about the size of our purchasing volume which we have in the systems. So just to put it into perspective. Um, yeah, it's about 150 people down there. I don't know whether you can read it. Um, what makes it very, very complicated in a way is that we have a centralized procurement structure, which you see down here, um, but we have very decentralized brands. And, and in all brands and regions, we operate um, very individually. So you have, we have a maximum of differentiation towards our customers, while we have a maximum of synergies on um, purchasing sites. So you, you will find the same parts in the Bugatti Veyron as in the Polo Blue Motion, which is sort of two different sites. And yeah, this is such a, one of our classic examples. So the light switch would be all the same in all cars. Right then, um, as, to our, as to why process mining is so important for us, or why, why has it become so important for us, we started about three or four years ago a strategy which we called Green 15. And do I have a laser pointer here? Oh, oh, no, never mind. It's the, the silver one. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. And um, the idea was that we have about 41 purchasing systems in place, so it's sort of a big landscape of systems. And we wanted that we wanted a worldwide implementation of all those purchasing systems in all brands and regions till 2015. That's why we call it Green 15, since it rhymes apparently. Um, and this is our purchasing system, it's called Ebon, which is electronic electronic bestellung online. And we did that. So every brand today is working with our system, it's centrally hosted within within Germany, but everybody worldwide, it's about four and a half thousand people, is working with this system. And um, what we did not succeed in, so we, we, we are very uh, successful in putting the system on a worldwide scale, but it's like if you put word to every user worldwide and you accept that everybody is writing the same text. And this is not what happened. So everybody got the same system, purchasing system, but um, not everybody was doing the same thing with, uh, with the system which we expected. So it, it was a, a bit sort of bad design in the first place, but that was luckily before my turn. <laughs> 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 um, anyways, yeah, so what we wanted to know is what's the real world out there? We wanted to, to, uh, to get an idea how do our 
how is our, what is our ordering process? How does it look like? Do we have bypasses? As can, can you is it is it visible here? Yeah. So apparently that's a barrier, and people are going around it. So we wanted to see how how it looks like, how our processes are really uh, are really executed. And what we did is we uploaded all the data uh, into the into the process mining tool, which is quite a painful painful thing to do since the system is from '95. So you can imagine data structure and it's, it's quite clogged with loads of data, so that was quite hard to do. And we came up with a process which sort of on the highest level looks more or less like the thing there on the left side. So, all right, doesn't look too bad, but if, if you sort of drill it down, it's a massive thing still. Um, and then what we did is we, we really wanted to get, to get an idea of what's behind that, what's going on. And so we did a process mining workshops and we discussed the um, the sort of the, the, the what, what's in there, like the, the results within the Disco tool. We discussed that with all sorts of people. We discussed it with purchasers who are actually working with the tool, which was very handy because those people they have no system or IT f uh, fiction whatsoever. So, but they were really good, able to to work with us in, in the in the process mining tool. We discussed it with our IT people. We discussed it with all sorts of people, and it was very helpful. So it really gave us gave us great results. So. We really advanced a lot on that day. Anna was there and helped us with her team. Thank you very much again. Um, and what we then did is we went to our top management. And that apparently was not the best of all ideas, which we could have. <laughs> <laughs> because what happened is, you see this line here? It shouldn't be there. <laughs> this is the line here. Um, but it is there, apparently. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> As I say, yeah, it, it, was not, it was not the most pleasant of all meetings. I mean, it was not, it was not really my fault since uh, I, I got into the, into the business, like in, into this project rather new. But anyways, but, but what, I, what I want to say is, like, this is very, um, I, I talked to uh, Walter earlier, it's very intrusive. So. The managers can jump at the problem and say, this line shouldn't be there, but maybe this line there. It's not your biggest problem. And this is, is exactly what was going on. So this is Jay-Z, by the way. And he's got this song, I got 99 problems, but the whatever, and one. So, and in, in our case, we got 99 problems, but the process was not really our worst problem. You see, I mean, we have, we have sort of inefficient processes at a certain point there, but what's much worse is the, the stuff which goes into our process and which comes out. For example, if you look at this, um, the bubble up there on the left side, we have 309 terms of delivery. Everybody else in the world is doing it with 11. So, you know, we have terms of delivery for countries which don't exist anymore and people still use it for whatever reasons. Um, we have 182 terms of payment, for, exa for example, in our systems but we only use two, but, uh, but we have them in all different names. And so, so this is just some, some light examples, but there's, there's big money um, going in. And, and what we see is that what comes into the process and what comes out of the process. So that's, that's the big issues we have. I mean, we have this line here, which I talked about, but this is not the worst thing for us. So in a way, um, yeah, in, in a way, what what we were what we are saying is, if um, how can I put it? We we, we are thinking was process like is the process really the problem, or is it more what comes into the process? You see, and that, as, as you say, we have one hundred twenty four or uh, one hundred twenty five billion euro floating through there, and we have about four thousand people working in the process. So in other words, for every um, like even if those four thousand people have a bit work a bit longer or have a few more minutes um, to work, it doesn't really bother us as much as long as we have the um, the, the the input uh, straight. Yeah, does that come through? Right then. Um, good. Um, so yeah, from from what I learned um, from from process mining so far is. When should we use process mining and, and when will we use it in the, in the beginning? First of all, um, as I said, I think use process mining if process 
efficiency is your problem. If you have a problem with effective effectivity somewhere within your system, I mean, you wouldn't really need to use process mine, as, as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I'm sure Anna will, will have a different opinion there, but... Um, secondly, it is very intrusive, so if you really want to discuss with people, um, you, if you want to discuss your processes with people, I think um, it's a very, very good thing to, to get you running. But as we said with the managers, it, it is very, sort of it oversimplifies in a way often problems. So, you, you know, you have this process that everybody can say, hey, this seems to be a problem. But sometimes maybe the problem is not what it seems. For example, the, 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 the um, colleague from Deloitte earlier, he showed this one guy, you remember, he was, he was up, like he was causing most of the problems. But is that the worst employee? Maybe it's the best employee and he gets all the tricky and all the, all the difficult things. And, and so, of course, he's taking longer for his, for this, um, for his process steps. <coughs> but if you fire him, maybe the whole operation breaks down. So that's why I'm saying it, it oversimplifies the way sometimes, as to, as to my um, understanding. Mm. Then, what we did um, is... I jumped into this project and we didn't really know what was going on. We had a big reorganization within the um, within our group and suddenly there I was, so what's the problem with, with uh, this process? And whoever I talked to, everybody was giving me different different um, points. So one was saying, okay, you've got that problem and that and that and that. And so really, um, I didn't really have a picture what the what, what the issues were. And so in a way, um, if you have a serendipity approach to process analysis, it might be right, the right thing. Do you know what serendipity is? Maybe I should explain it. Yeah, some, some nods. For example, do you know those um, post-it text markers? And um, apparently they were invented by somebody who was um, uh, looking for super glue, for very sticky glue. And, and so he, he found something by not really looking for it. And, and I think this is a way also in which we looked at our process. So we, we just jumped in and said, hey, what's going on here? We just had to look around. So in a way, serendipity is, uh, is your approach. I think it's very good. Um, and then on the same page, maybe, if you have old processes and you don't really know what's going on and the people who've designed them have long left, I think it's quite a handy tool because you can really say, hey, what's, what's in there? Right, so yeah, this is my recommendation for using process mining. But when should you... As, as, as far as I'm concerned, think twice about process mining is um, when you have poor data quality. And you remember we have 41 purchasing systems for all different process steps. And for our team, for my team, it took us about three months, four months to get the data straight. We had a different system and it took us about 20 minutes to get the data straight. It took us about half an hour to take the first actions and after two days the whole thing was through. So in a way, if, if your data is poor, um, yeah, better work on data quality first. Um, what we also have is we have loads of offline process steps. So, for example, before the, before the ordering sets in, kicks in, we have a lot of paperwork-based um, processes still. And if you have that, of course, you will only, you'll only see a certain um, part of the process. So you, you'll be stuck in your silo in a way. And what we are experiencing currently is that our suppliers know our processes better than we do, in a way. Um, I mean, it sounds quite funny, but what they are doing is they, they know exactly where our process flaws are, and they do their business modeling uh, according to it. So they know where they can, where they can um, yeah, generate more money or, or more margin from them because we have, we have shortcomings in the process. But that's exactly between the process steps, so, so we are quite unlikely to find a good process model. Um, yeah, and then thirdly, I mean, comes again in the same same play. Um, if you if you operate manual interfaces, I mean, I think it's quite unlikely that um, yeah, that process mining will give you will give you a big picture. Um, right then, um, concluding like my um, my experiences are quite ambivalent. I started five years ago in Volkswagen in business intelligence and uh, we were having ClickView. Is ClickView known to anybody? It's a data analysis software. Yeah, I think most people use it and everybody was going crazy about the bubbles and everything was moving and the diagrams and um, I think it helped us a lot in the first place but 
I mean, eventually people got used to it, so and it wasn't it was not used that much anymore. So I think it's um, you have great. I mean, you, you have great opportunities with the tool. But I mean, you have to use it in the end. We see it with ClickView, for example. We've spent millions on it, but people are not using it that much anymore, even though there's great potential behind it. Um, which brings me to my next point. I think most people do have a certain gut feeling about what's going on in their workplace. And as with, um, with um, those ClickView tools and data analysis tools, um, I don't think people like to get challenged about their perception of the world. So in a way, it's, you, you, you think that's the way the world is. You don't really want somebody coming around with a new tool and challenge your perception of the world. Um, so we have all those confirmation biases where, where you're looking for evidence which confirms your view on the world. And we have those halo effects. For example, if you talk to managers, you'll, you'll, always, you'll, you'll always have to focus on the problems which popped up last in the, on, on their agenda. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you know that all, I think. Um, what I very, very much liked about it is it really gets you going. So it gets people going. It, it gives you, it kicks in um, process optimization. So people really, I mean, they, they lose the fear of uh, optimizing processes. So that's quite an, quite an asset for me. It, it really helped us in the process also. Um, yeah, and then, as I said, um, um, Walter told me before, it's quite intrusive. So it really jumps on you and, and it, it shows you problems. Um, maybe a bit oversimplifying. Um, yeah, so I have in some a very positive picture with a certain ambivalence to it. Um, like, usually I, s I end with um, that you are asking questions to me, but I would like to ask a question to you guys. Does anybody of you have experience with sustainability? We have a strong issue regarding sustainability. Um, so we have optimized quite a few processes, but has anybody ever um, used process mining to ensure pr uh, sustainability within the within his processes? Any experience on that, maybe from from there? You mean environmental sustainability? No, I'm I'm sorry for that. Um, I'm sort of you you implement a new process, a leaner process, a sort of better process, but um, how do you prevent people from bypassing it again? So um, how, how do you get so how do you get the changes running and and, and constant? Falling okay. back into old patterns, right? Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Well, quick, quick response to your question. I think um, the only way to ensure sustainability is to keep reviewing it periodically, and and uh, you can't set up a review mechanism that is fully automated and on and on autopilot. Yeah. Uh, I think. Um, Process excellence groups within organizations have to take that up as a role, yeah. not just fix the process in, in one time and go away, but yeah. be involved in it on, on an ongoing basis. And I think every two to three years you have to redo the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, because every three years organizations usually change their structures and new people come in and, and, and so on. And that's probably a good time to do a, a deeper dive. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, thank you. Ask the mic fit. Well, it's a bit the uh, same as uh, he's saying. What I did in the past when changing the process on the department was uh, because I noticed we did, we did the change and everybody agreed. You find out two weeks later that everybody's working still the same way. Yeah. So, so what I then did is checking them, that was very simple, checking them every day for first two weeks, then every two days, yeah. then every three days, and then you know, first taking them by hand and then leaving slowly leaving them. And yeah. then they get acquainted to it, start understanding it, because that's often the problem. They do not really understand in the first place, but by doing it, having them, then doing it continuously and monitoring it, then, then leaving uh, after a certain time. Right. I mean, we have 4,000 people in there, so it's, yeah. quite, it's, it's quite a job. What, what we did is we, we, um, we organizationally did it by um, ch changing checks and balances. So we have, we have the units which are um, improving the processes, but then we change the sort of the um, responsibility for those sustainability <coughs> checks to somebody else. So, you know, you, you don't check your own process whether you've done a good job, you see? So we've, we've changed it organizationally, but yeah. 
Right, so yeah, questions to me then. Thank you very much, first of all, gentlemen. Um, thank you very much. First of all, um, I would like to uh, talk about sustainability again. Mm -hmm. So you said uh, you needed three months in order to extract data from those 41 systems. No, we only used one system. Yeah. Only, oh. only this EBON, EBON system. Okay. Uh, only one. So um, in order to uh, um, speed up um, the process analysis, hmm. you would not need to uh, speed up that data extraction and then in that way you could use process mining to continuously monitor the process and thereby have um, a possibility to sustain a high level of quality. So my question is, um, what kind of systems were those? Were those SAP systems? No, we don't operate SAP in purchasing our, to a very, very limited extent. Some of our Brazil still has some SAP systems, but by and large it's all our own developments. So we have very complex uh, purchasing systems, particularly since we're purchasing modules. You see, like, if you have the dashboard of a car, we send some parts to the supplier, where he assembles different parts from different suppliers and puts it back just in time in the line. And by the time we were designing the systems, SAP wasn't there yet. I think they might be able to do it now, but we don't do SAP. Okay, thank you very much. But it's a good point we're designing, like when we design new systems now, we have a very close watch on uh, data integrity and data quality. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm wondering about sustainability. Um, how did you measure that? Did you define KPIs for specific dimension, for performance, for compliance, or other issues? And how did uh, process mining help you to control that? Yeah, as I said, it's just, this was our first process mining, um, our first process mining uh, yeah, job. And if you remember that slide here, so what we are what we are doing sustainability checks on is like what comes in and what comes out. We're not not as much into in, in the process, but I think af after a while it's all um, times which it run through. And I think within the process it's not that critical to to establish KPIs. Which we found more critical was sort of input and output data and having that and uh, having KPIs on that and defining KPIs on that. So we don't really have much experience on. Process my KPIs. Talking, thank you for your presentation. Talking about sustainability, uh, I would have a, a few suggestions, and that is uh, because basically what you've done now, I suppose, is discovery. Yeah. And what you can also do with some of the tools, I suppose, is compliance. Uh, basically, you say the happy flow is the to be. And everything which is uh, not not in compliance, all the exceptions, uh, I route that to in the workflow to responsible people or so. Mm -hmm. And what you could also consider is when you analyze where the where the tracks uh, go after happy flow, uh, flow, what activity that is, and then just use the segregation of duties in the system to block that so that they cannot use it anymore. So, so there are there are many many ways to put in controls to prevent that people use yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, clearly, you're, you're given your purchasing volume. There's a wide variety of things that you buy with wide variety of perhaps criticality associated with it. Mm -hmm. Did you think about segmenting that in any way? Is, is the organization set up to deal with different things differently? And, and well, Does segmentation help? Yeah, it's a very good question. We have a process, and um, it's quite interesting. And um, we have a um, a rule in place. If you if you are if you have the production line running, and there's a part missing, for example, because somebody hasn't issued a purchase order, and we, they'll call the supplier straight away and deliver it to the line mm -hmm. without having a purchase order, without having any process at all. SAP wouldn't allow you to do that. You you wouldn't be able to sort of get the material in. But our systems apparently they do it. So. It's always with us. It's always production overruling any process. So as long as, uh, like, if, if the line stops, we're dead, you know. So that's always that's always on the top priority. Um, and uh, apart from that, we know we don't have different um, we don't have different items f with different criticality in a way. I mean, we have we have it regarding our um, the availability of parts, but that's a different process. We are only ordering. So within my process, I don't, do, I don't have it. So
So at some point in time, you mentioned that uh, you unified uh, uh, different existing systems into a single new system, and that people, although they were using the system, the same system, that they were working in different ways. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that I'm interested in is uh, so-called cross-organizational mining, where yeah. you don't mine a single process, but you mine processes for different parts of the organization. Mm -hmm. And then to try to understand why people are doing it, things in a particular way mm -hmm. and whether one group of people can learn from other groups. Uh, so, so one of the projects that we have is with 10 uh, Dutch municipalities. They are all executing exactly the same process, mm -hmm. but they are doing it all very different, although they are need to obey the same law. Yeah. And it's very interesting to see uh, uh, let's say why people do different things and what is effective. Yeah. Is it possible to do something like that with the kind of systems and data that you have? Yeah, we did that. We took in um, all different brands and regions working with it, and we can indeed see that, for example, Zia is working quite differently compared to um, Volkswagen or Skoda or yeah, like, like they're all working differently in a way. The interesting thing is that we have our um, performance measurement of our purchases. It, it's behind the system, so it takes data from that. And what we are finding is that it's like a bit of like the, the, the Tour de France. So everybody's doped a little bit in, in all different ways. So yeah, we, we, we do see strong uh, differences between the, between the brands and reasons, yeah. But I mean, we can see it, you know, we, we can see it and, and we're going to, to cut that straight within the next, say, year or so. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot, Philip. Thank you.